Welcome to Actual Spinster. Today I wanted to talk with you about five books that you should read instead of watching Eurovision. But before I do, I'd like to uh, encourage you to get in contact with the broadcasters of Eurovision in your country, the performers um, like representing your country in Eurovision, and also the sponsors of Eurovision, to demand that they don't include Israel within the contest as they continue to commit genocide against Palestinians. Uh, calling on yeah the performers, the broadcasters, the sponsors to protest against the inclusion of Israel and or to drop out in solidarity. If you don't live in a uh, country that participates in Eurovision, you can still get in contact, like that's fine. I will leave a link to a really amazing Google Doc with everything you'll need to get in contact with the sponsors, broadcasters, performers in all of the different countries, like of all of the different countries. And I also think there's an email template there which is translated into lots of different languages that you can then use as well to yeah get in contact. Yeah, that's obviously the most important thing actually out of this video, not the books, <laughs> just th that kind of call to action. But I'll, I'll tell you about some books as you do that. I decided to try to cover like yeah a kind of range to some degree of sort of what you might be looking for in terms of eurovision -y stuff. So not all of these books are Palestinian, although uh, two are. I would also like to hear what you'll be reading instead of watching Eurovision or if you have any specific recommendations or Palestinian specific book recs. Okay, so the first book is Interviews with Radical Palestinian Women, edited by Shoal Collective. Uh, this book is really, out of the other five books, this is really the book that you should read. If you're only going to read one of the books that I talk about here, read this one. This is a really fantastic book, um, obviously of interviews with Palestinian women from across various different experiences and regions. So there's people uh, who live in like Bethlehem and other places in the West Bank, there's people who are in Gaza, there's also people who are in the diaspora as well, who are Palestinians who are in some way exiled or were able to leave like the blockade and stuff. And they definitely, you know, there are some like overlapping themes, I think, overlapping ways of talking and thinking about their experiences, but obviously they also have different experiences of like occupation, family life, activism. In reading it, I think you can get a really great sense of like the depth in terms of Palestinian resistance and struggle, you know, more information just generally about like living in like under Zionist Israeli occupation, but also in terms of the conflict within Palestinian politics itself. There are those who are like specifically being targeted and trying to fight back against settlers in the West Bank, for example, who have a different experience than the Palestinians in the diaspora who, yeah, talk to or talk about how they relate to their like homeland or politics abroad in maybe different terms or like yeah with different kind of priorities yeah it's just a beautiful and difficult and hopeful and also unhopeful to some degree but also really amazing to kind of hear these the voices of these women i think it's really a book that everybody should read it's deeply grounded in yeah the sort of everyday life of living under occupation or blockade and the extreme violence that people experience whilst also foregrounding women in political struggle which uh, I think you know often women get completely sidelined erased or ignored from yeah narratives around struggle or like liberation movement so in that sense I also thought it was really wonderful as well so yeah I'd really really recommend this the next book is Intimacies by Katie Kitamura which is about a translator who is working like at The Hague um like the International Court of Justice and she's kind of like unmoored from life she's i guess she's just kind of struggling to kind of find her way in the world or like make a sort of home for herself and she's also struggling to some degree about like with her position within the justice system that she interprets for and that all kind of like culminates around her role as an interpreter for a case against a west african ex-dictator who is yeah being taken to court for crimes against humanity it's a slight book you know it's not very long and it doesn't take long to read either but i think it works well in terms of how it it's thinking about yeah some quite like fraught and intense topics like like violence and translation relationships and i like that it had a tenderness towards Europe as yeah a place or a project or whatever but it was also critical of Europeanness and Europe as the kind of like arbitrator of humanity or justice or whatever and yeah and obviously 
it sort of becomes more and more interesting to read this book in the context of like the muse. Eurovision is of course gay so I had to choose some yeah queer books so this book is You Exist Too Much by Zaina Arafat which is about a Palestinian American woman um, who's bisexual. Honestly I found her bisexuality very refreshing. This book is a sad book. It's about the main character who's trying to kind of come to terms with her sort of distorted relationship with love, love, which could also be kind of seen as like obsession as well as sort of in some way dealing with or healing from to some degree um, her like pretty abusive relationship with her mother. It's told with a sort of present day stream where she's seeking treatment for her issues and then also we get some kind of like um, memories and going back in time in terms of like her family life, memories with her mother traveling around, there's also some visits that she goes to like with her family to Palestine and also neighboring countries. I feel like this fits in with if you're one of, uh, you know, if you're kind of a fan of maybe one of those more like messy women books, although I also sort of feel like it's a disservice to call this like, you know, to make this into some kind of tropey thing. And I actually was thinking about it and I kind of feel like it's maybe a little bit like I'm a fan by Sheena Patel but with more therapy. So yeah. So this is the shortest book on the list and this is The Swarm by Dahlia Nace, or Nice I guess. A poetry collection or novel or like you know a novel in poetry that follows a Jewish filmmaker called Dali Muru as they travel across Eastern Europe trying to make a film, visiting like former Ottoman Bath, the Carpathian Mountains, traveling back in time to eat at like Soviet canteens, meeting various ghosts, you know, like trans Romani spirits and Jewish anarchists and so on. It's a very fluid, nebulous, spiritual, political, fun, historical work. And I wanted to read a little review of it because it is quite difficult to sum up in that sense. So this is what um, a review on Vashti Media, which I'll link below, said of it. It is an intertwining of queer anarchist diasporism or the combination of Jewish diasporic experience, utopian kinship and visionary anti-statism with the idea of self-creating one's family tree, offering an intersectional comradeship beyond the borders and normative offerings of Jewish life. And I think one of the things I loved the most about it was how it starts to play around with what Judeo-Islamic comradeship might might begin to look like or yeah it's like historical precedent. So the last recommendation is Queer Ukraine, an anthology of LGBTQI plus Ukrainian voices during wartime. So this is obviously a collection of writing by lots of different people with various kind of like different perspectives, yeah different kind of focuses. All of them were fairly interesting and, and engaged in some way with like queerness and Ukrainian politics or history. My favourite was a piece uh, near the end of the collection called Tuning the ba Bandura, I believe, by Elliot Miskovitz or Miskovich, which is about borders, migration, uh, like solidarity and mutual aid and family. And yeah, I thought it would be nice to include this on this list because I think it would be nice to read something about Ukraine right now, especially in terms of like queer people's experience. Yeah, I actually think that that particular essay part is online so I'll maybe see if I can find it and link it below. Um, it's really very beautiful and I think it's very special as an expression of commitment to resistance, resisting genocide and imperialism and yeah kinship across time okay so those are the books uh i just want to like reiterate that like if israel is allowed to participate in eurovision nobody should be watching it um so definitely don't watch it if that happens if that does happen you've you've got some great book recommendations uh so hopefully you can enjoy this instead uh i haven't read any books i don't believe by like armenian authors so if you do have a specifically armenian recommendation i'd also be interested I'll leave links to learn more about everything i mentioned um including like the bds movement and yeah the google doc with all of the information you'll need to get in contact with various people. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I had to say to a free Palestine always and forever. Bye.